Welcome to worship at New Life Presbyterian Church. I'm Dwight Williams, pastor of New Life. We are located at 4060 Pratt Street, 41st and Pratt in Omaha, Nebraska. We welcome you to our worship today. We would like to celebrate with Benny Jones on his 99th birthday on April 17th. He was greeted by a long line of cars in a drive through birthday party, and it was a great experience. At our session meeting on February 28th, our elders voted to donate $200 of their COVID relief checks to the budget of New Life Presbyterian Church. This is in addition to their regular tithes and offerings to the church. And the elders hope that they can inspire others to make a similar gift. Remember, a tithe of the $1,400 stimulus is $140. And we thank you for your dedication to the ministries at New Life. If you are in need of pastoral care, either contact me or contact one of the elders on the list. Let us now recall our mission statement. We believe we are called to be a congregation of diverse backgrounds, ages, and races, bound together by the love of God as God's servants, partners, and missionaries in sharing God's love. We believe we are called to be a sign of hope in our community to bring new life to the world, and to give our lives as a channel of the Holy Spirit, providing spiritual leadership in the community and involving others in caring for God and neighbors. We believe we are called to be preachers and doers of God's word through worship, study, fellowship, and involvement in and for all, both here and worldwide. Let us join together in our call to worship and opening prayer. God is with us this morning, calling us to friendship, calling us to praise. God is with us this morning, calling us to listen, calling us to respond. God is with us this morning, calling us to confess, calling us to forgive. God is with us this morning, calling us to celebrate, calling us to follow Jesus. Let us join our hearts in worship. Let us pray. Loving God, over and over you have shown your faithfulness to us. God of love, your graciousness washes over all creation. You have a love that searches out the lost and rejected. You have a love that brings wholeness and healing. You demonstrate a love that is not satisfied with half-truths or evasion, but that confronts evil and injustice head-on. Your love accepts the despised and lonely. We admit that our love has not been this way. Help us and redeem us. In your covenant love, make us into the kind of disciples that you want to have filling the world. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the third Sunday of the season of Easter, and we are still basking in the Easter glow because we are an Easter faith. So here is a reading from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 42 through 47, telling us how that early church, also basking in the Easter glow, learned to live together. Listen for God's word. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common, they would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, 
breaking of bread, and prayers. This is a snapshot of what it is to be the church. This is a snapshot of what it means to be a Christian. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and prayers. Notice that this verse says nothing about how you feel in your heart, or following the Ten Commandments, or being a good person. The description of what it means to be a Christian is a group thing. Together, we learn about the faith. Together, we spend time in fellowship. Together, we eat together. Ordinary meals and this holy meal. Together, we worship. In our individualistic and narcissistic society, spirituality has taken on this air of individuality. How many people have you known who feel that they can be Christians all alone, sitting outside, enjoying nature, out on the mountainside, without all of the nonsense of the organized church? Well, I am well aware of the faults of organized religion. The church is often a messed up institution. But this is the way that God has designed us. The way that God has brought us together in community from the beginning of salvation history. This is how God's grace has been known to us through time. Teaching, fellowship, breaking bread, and prayers. Covenant theology means that we are bound in relationship to one another. We are bound in relationship with God and how we learn of God's covenant love is through teaching and fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayers. On Palm Sunday, we read about Jesus weeping over Jerusalem, and he, we remembered the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. Jesus wept is a sign of God's relationship to us. God cares so much. God weeps at our misfortune. Here's a little bit of trivia. Besides the uh, shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept, the shortest chapter in the Bible is Psalm 117. And it says pretty much the same thing as the shortest verse in the Bible. God cares so much. Here are the 31 words of the shortest chapter in the Bible. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol God, all you peoples. For great is God's steadfast love towards us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. God's steadfast love, God's faithfulness. The Hebrew word is hesed, and it means covenant love, forever love, unstoppable love, merciful love, grace-filled love. And it is a sign of God's relationship to us. God loves us so much, God will stay faithful forever. It's like God is slipping a ring on our finger and saying, we are in this together, for richer, for poorer, in joy or in sorrow, in sickness and in health, as long as we live. Covenant love is about faithfulness through thick and thin. The United States Marine Corps uses that motto that describes their unwavering faithfulness and dedication. Semper Fi, Latin for always faithful. Marines are bound together, not just by an institutional connection, but by a fierce loyalty that far exceeds any contract or piece of paper. Marines have pledged to be faithful no matter what. Semper Fidelis. The way God says Semper Fi is God's steadfast love endures forever. Psalm 118, a much longer psalm, but is the one right after that super short Psalm 117, the phrase God's steadfast love endures forever occurs five times. God's steadfast love endures forever. God's steadfast love for endures forever. God's hesed, unstoppable love goes on forever. Loving kindness, faithfulness, fidelity. I love Psalm 136 because every verse has the refrain, for God's steadfast love endures forever. 26 times, one for each verse, the psalm says, God's steadfast love endures forever. 
I'm beginning to get the idea that God's nature has something to do with covenant, steadfast love, and that we, made in God's image, are to be a part of this covenant love. It might seem a little ironic that just as I am preaching about, we need to stay together for teaching and fellowship and breaking of bread and prayers is right in the middle of a pandemic and we are not getting together for fellowship, for breaking of bread, for Sunday school classes and worship inside the sanctuary. It seems ironic that we're not doing a very good job of fulfilling these four great hallmarks of the church. But maybe this pandemic has been a gift for the global church and for the local church. Maybe it will shake us out of our stupor. Maybe it is the wake-up call that will pull our church out of our long, slow decline. Because I think maybe that the church is learning that the point of church is not to fight over the color of carpet. Maybe the church is learning that the point of the church is not turf wars or petty power struggles. Maybe the global church is learning that fellowship is important, that prayer is important, that worship is important, that bringing in new friends from the community, offering them friendship and prayer and teaching and worship and adding to each day the number that are being saved. And the church that survives best is when it has no interest in surviving, but when it gives itself away. I think we are learning that there are needs in our community in, and in our world that are so acute, so stark, so overwhelming, that we are compelled to give ourselves away. And we do have a great example for us in the person of Jesus Christ. He did not prioritize his own survival, but Jesus humbled himself and he gave himself up for all of us, for each of us. We are not alone. We are bound to each other, and we are bound to God in covenant. God's intention is to bind us together in ways that keep us growing in strength and maturity and faithfulness and love. Do you remember that old children's finger play? Here's the church, here's the steeple. Open the doors and see all the people. It's a way to teach children that the church is not a building, the church is people. The church is not a building, the church is people. The church is not a building, the church is people. You and I are the church. If something terrible were to happen, uh, if our church building burned down, or there was a, a, a tornado or earthquake, and the building fell down, we would still have the church. That is, we would still have each other. That is what is most important. That is what church is. Amen. Let us turn to our God in prayer. O God of love for your marvelous creation, mountains, trees, plants, oceans and lakes, wildlife, and the great joy of being made in your image. We celebrate the joy of food and relationship. We thank you, O oh God, that you have given us all of these joys, and we pray that we can remember them as we continue to form your church in this world, as we continue to reach out and bring your good news to those who have not heard. We thank you for calling and equipping leaders to participate in your work in the world. We think of those who paved the way for us, those who have passed on before us, but who loved us enough to correct us. We pray that we may have teachable spirits. May we heed their wisdom. We thank you that you allow us to grow through our failure and mistakes. We pray that we may gain both insight and humility from our experiences of failures and successes. We thank you for mentors who have seen gifts in us that we never knew we had. 
and we pray that we may become those mentors for others and hone their gifts for your use. We pray for all of those who are in the midst of the wilderness, who are uncertain and, uh, and afraid. We pray that they will know your peace, that you will envelop them in your peace and assure them of your constant presence. We pray, O oh God, for those who struggle during these days. Uphold them, uphold us, Grant them comfort and strength and help them to trust in you even during difficult times. We pray for the families of those black men and women who have been killed. We pray for the communities that are inflamed because of these incidents. We pray for our country that has obviously not solved all of our racial divisions. We pray for leaders in government, leaders in the business community, and leaders in our church. We pray for this particular church. Give us wisdom and strength and the ability to graciously give ourselves away, to worry not of our own survival, but to worry instead about spreading the joy of your peace, your love, your life. We thank you for hearing all of these prayers. And we also lift up those prayers that are silent and harbored deep in our hearts. And we know that you hear them even before we have the courage to pray. For all of this and more, we raise it in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Hear now the charge and benediction. Go out into the world as God's chosen people. Love the Lord, love your neighbors. God has told you what is good and what does the Lord desire of you, but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with our God. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen. Jesus.